Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to talk about regional anesthesia drugs part four. Uh, for other clarifications or for basics, please refer to the previous sections from one to three. Okay, we are going to talk about uses, adjuvants, and systemic toxicity of local anesthetics in this talk. So let's look at the uses of local anesthetics. You can use it as a local infiltrative anesthesia for topical anesthesia, okay? Like for example, before endoscopy, you can spray like a lignocaine for peripheral nerve blocks, for neuraxial anesthesia, and for IV regional anesthesia, which is called a Byers block. For arrhythmia treatment, you can give IV lignocaine, which is preservative free, and for pain management, okay? And this is a very busy chart, okay, uh, which is showing us that lidocaine uh, is used most commonly topical, infiltrative, IV regional anesthesia, nerve blocks, okay, bupivacaine, uh, not topical, infiltrative, peripheral nerve blocks, epidural spinal, levobupivacaine, similar to bupivacaine, ropivacaine, also same. So only lidocaine you get in the topical form, others are all used for other forms. So uh, the local anesthetic adjuvants, okay. Um, many adjuvants are used in many centers, but there are only few which are technically approved for use. Okay, epinephrine is the most commonly used. You get sometimes pre-prepared uh, solutions of local anesthetic with, uh, with adrenaline, okay. So what is the advantage? It is a as you know, is a vasoconstrictor. It will prolong the blockade time, enhances the intensity of block, decreases systemic drug absorption. It's alpha-2, is direct analgesic effect. It's available in one in one lakh, one in two lakh, one in four lakh concentration. Higher concentration may lead to, uh, you know, you may want to avoid in patients who are proarrhythmic or having ischemic heart disease. So many a times, the surgeon may consult you if it's okay to use adrenaline in the solution, okay? So you need to see if your patient is going to tolerate because it does get absorbed at some point in your system, okay? Uh, also may cause tissue or nerve damage, uh, secondary to arterial construction or reduced blood flow. So do not use any uh, mixture with adrenaline for any um, uh, areas with uh, terminal nerve endings. For example, in digits, in penile block, okay, you are not supposed to use uh, any cons any mixture containing adrenaline. It can be extremely bad and you can have gangrene. Uh, then you have uh, little or no effect if local anesthetic is highly protein bound, for example, like bupivacaine. That's why the most commonly used combination is with lignocaine. Clonidine, that is an alpha-2 agonist, inhibitory effect on A and C pain fibers. Duration of action can uh, move up by two hours, recommend preservative free solutions. Okay, opioids are the uh, adjuvants which are FDA approved. Uh, you have two types, hydrophilic and lipophilic uh, opioids. Okay, so hydrophilic morphine, lipophilic is fentanyl and sufentanyl. Uh, uses uh, CNS receptor targeting with spinal and epidural roots, improved analgesic profiles. Uh, you can get excellent analgesia, early ambulation, reduced risk of DVT, better post-op pain control, early extubation, reduces surgical stress, reduces uh, the MAC, absence of motor, sensory, or autonomic blockage. Okay. Uh, bicarbonate was used very commonly, um, very like I don't think currently very few people would use bicarbonate, but because it has been used for a long time, we're mentioning here, Increases the pH, thus yielding more non-ionized local anesthetic. Increases rate of onset by three to five minutes. Steroids. Uh, triamcinolol is used more in chronic pain, uh, such as the pain management uh, doctors, uh, physicians, uh, where they give epidural blocks or they give blocks uh, uh, in cell ganglion, celiac plexus blocks. They will use it for neuritis type of pain. Okay. Uh, for peripheral nerve blocks, the more commonly used steroid is dexamethasone. Okay. It's used to prolong block time and also uh, supposedly is neuroprotective. Other adjuvants, uh, midazolam, which is a benzodiazepine, ketamine, NMD antagonist, but these are not FDA approved. So why do we get local anesthetic systemic toxicity? Uh, 
is obvious reason is because of high concentration of the drug either you have given more or you have injected uh, in an area where there is high vascularity common mechanism is accidentally intravenous injection or systemic absorption of local anesthetic so first it affects the sodium uh, uh, channel which is uh, more in the cns and then the cvs so the effects of cns are seen first and then of the cvs always it is first excitatory and then depression so you will get probably first convulsion and then coma then you will get first tachy and then bradyhy okay so the first uh, thing what you may the patient will say is having circum oral paresthesias tinnitus confusion but if you have given uh, some block or you have given epidural and then patient is under anesthesia of course you are going to miss all these signs and symptoms <clears throat> so excitatory phase you will get con uh, convulsions in the depressive phase you will get respiratory depression coma and loss of consciousness in the cardiovascular effects initial phase you will get hypertension tachycardia then patient will become hypotensive because of severe myocardial depression you'll have decreased cardiac output and then hypotension bradycardia dysrhythmias conduction if defects can go on to cardiac arrest so we see the phases so initially you will have at the base you have tinnitus lightheadedness perioral numbness then you have unconsciousness muscular twitches visual disturbances convulsions coma myocardial depression respiratory arrest cardiac arrhythmias and then ventricular arrest so treatment uh, uh you know you have to give uh, lipids you have to treat arrhythmia systemic uh, you know treat the causes avoid any pro arrhythmic drugs uh also and then follow the basic acls guidelines to resuscitate the patient but of course prevention is always always better than cure okay uh, so bupivacaine is the most cardiotoxic because it has got the highest affinity for cardiac sodium channels it has high affinity for resting and inactivated sodium channels lower dis uh, slower dissociation from the receptor further complicating its effect on normal cardiac sodium conductor so what do we do initial management okay call for help stop the injection if you are giving in an infusion form okay uh, if there is respiratory depression uh, you may need to support airway or secure an airway uh, i'm assuming you already have an iv line if you don't then you need to get one okay before any block before any procedure it is mandatory to put an iv access before you start anything it is exactly for this reason so that if you have a complication it is easier to manage Uh, give some anticonvulsant, so you can just give medazolam, which is available in the OT, and you give lipid emulsion. Okay, then you may need inotropes, antiarrhythmics. Okay, lipid emulsion, lipid emulsion. It is mandatory, but lipid emulsion uh, is not always easy to get. Uh, and you make sure it is available in your hospital if you are using any kind of local anesthetic anesthesia. Okay, ACLS guidelines. Uh, if nothing works, you may need. to put the patient on cardiopulmonary bypass to get the uh, local anesthetic out of the system of course observation and uh, see the recovery in icu okay so what is the dose of lip lipid emulsion 1.5 ml per kg iv over 1 minute infusion you can give uh, after the bolus 0.25 to 0.5 ml per kg per minute uh repeat bolus once or twice if there is persistent cardiovascular collapse okay continue infusion for at least 10 minutes or up to attaining circulatory stability maximum 10 ml per kg lipid lipid emulsion over first 30 minutes okay and the rest of the supportive management stays the same so as per uh, astra guidelines this is just a flow chart okay so it is the same thing given in a different form so call for help get a rescue last is local anesthetic systemic toxicity so you if you have something ready made or pre prepared it is it will work faster okay in call the perfusionist to prepare for cardiopulmonary bypass if the symptoms are very severe and uh, start lipid emulsion as early as possible it helps you uh, to avoid or reduce the progression uh, of or worsening of the symptoms okay then if seizure of of course you'll have to uh, secure the airway and give benzodiazepine 
propofol if available use but it is uh, you know give it slow arrhythmia or hypotension okay uh, you cannot avoid local anesthetics okay so if you already have local anesthetic toxicity don't give lignocaine as an antiarrhythmic uh, beta blockers calcium channel blockers vasopressin you have to be very careful okay epinephrine smaller than normal dose start with less than 1 mic per kg uh, then you have to just observe and give uh, supportive treatment the patient if you are uh, intervened at the right minute you can of course resuscitate or uh, resuscitate the patient successfully thank you very much and practice safe anesthesia mm -hmm.